nutrition ranks high on the political agenda of Asian leaders. Asian News Flash looks deeper into a number of issues related to the fight against hunger. Welcome to today's edition of Asian News Flash. I'm Serena Manisho, your host for today's program. A daily glass of milk can make a big difference in improving the nutrition of food for children, especially there are many benefits in terms of health and also education for children. The increased consumption of milk and other forms of dairy products by the vast populations in Asia, however, presents a number of challenges. And today joining us is Mr. Winod Ahujam, the Livestock Policy Officer at the FAO Regional Office for Asia and the Pacific, based in Bangkok, to share his thought on this matter. Welcome to the show, Mr. Winod Ahujam. Thank you. The last two to three decades, we have seen that milk and other forms of dairy products playing a pivotal role in the lives of many people in Asia. Can you tell us and explain the reasons behind these trends? Well, there are many important reasons for mm -hmm. this. Uh, first, as we know, uh, incomes uh, in the region have grown quite rapidly over the last two to three decades. Mm -hmm. And when people's incomes grow, mm -hmm. they usually like to have higher quality diets, and that includes milk. The other reason is that the nutritional awareness about nutritional qualities of milk mm -hmm. has improved. Uh, so the Asia region has emerged as the strongest growing region when it comes to consumption of milk and milk mm -hmm. products. On the production side, governments are increasingly recognizing the tremendous potential of dairy sector in generating rural incomes and rural employment, mm -hmm. and they have taken specific measures to invest in promoting dairy. They have promoted dairy cooperatives. Some of the governments have promoted dairy hubs mm -hmm. or uh, private investment in dairy sector. Mm -hmm. So these are the factors behind uh, these trends. So if milk is a small farmer's favorite, then who are the producers in the region then? Well, if we were to look at the entire Asia Pacific region, uh, more than 80% of the milk in the region is produced mm -hmm. by small farmers. Mm -hmm. Uh, between 1980 and 2010, milk production has actually grown from about 57 million tons to more than 225 million tons. Mm -hmm. This is fourfold increase in three decades. Mm -hmm. And this is the result of hard work of millions of small farmers mm -hmm. uh, who have been supported by uh, rural organizations and dairy cooperatives in over 25 countries. Mm. And what about the demand for milk itself? Well, the demand is growing faster than production, and that means countries have to import. And the, the import dependency is increasing in some of the countries in the region. But if we look into the future, uh, we estimate that by 2050, the region will need to produce about 400 million tons. Mm -hmm. And that's a huge challenge mm -hmm. uh, and requires huge investments in improving productivity and strengthening linkages to markets for these small f farmers. Can you outline what are the things that might be needed? Okay. One of the uh, important area, in my view, is to invest in improving productivity. Mm -hmm. uh, productivity currently uh, mm -hmm. is constrained due to poor genetic potential, due to prevalence mm -hmm. of, a, of a lot of diseases mm -hmm. and so on. So there needs to be huge investment in systematic breed improvement program, mm -hmm. in systematic disease control program, mm -hmm. Also, in systematic programs to educate farmers about feed and fodder utilization mm -hmm. and animal nutrition. Mm -hmm. These are some of the areas in which we need to invest uh, heavily in, into the future. Another area, I presume, is the quality of milk itself. Can the region produce high quality of milk to international standards? Most certainly. We think uh, the region can produce the highest quality milk, mm -hmm. but it does require uh, investment in some modern technologies. Mm -hmm. Uh, modern and appropriate technologies mm -hmm. along the dairy food uh, chain. Mm -hmm. and it also requires investment mm -hmm. in uh, capacity development, training of um, milk processors, milk vendors, collectors, aggregators, so at, at all stages of the value chain. So introducing new technologies and of course production, there's a cost. Would the small player be able to compete with the big player in the industry then? No doubt. Mm -hmm. uh, our studies have shown that smallholder producers actually incur lower production costs mm -hmm. than the large producers. Mm -hmm. And their smallholder production systems are also more resilient mm -hmm. to rising feed prices. Mm -hmm. But they do need uh, a, some sort of an organizational platform mm -hmm. uh, to improve their bargaining power in the market. And at FAO, we believe uh, dairy cooperatives and producer organizations are the best mm -hmm. way forward. Now, FAO itself, how is FAO combating with dairy in terms of climate changes? How are, we, how are we minimizing the impact? 
Well, uh, when it comes to the debate between agriculture and climate change, FAO has been a pioneer. There are many ways uh, one can reduce the environmental footprint of dairy. Mm -hmm. This requires um, better feeding technologies, better feeding practices so that the, uh, the gases production in the rumen is decreased. It requires uh, integrating uh, crop and livestock production. Mm -hmm. It also requires capturing gases in the form of biogas, biodigesters and so on to generate energy. So there are many ways uh, one can uh, reduce the environmental footprint of dairy and FAO is working on those. And FAO itself, what are the activities that FAO is performing at the moment in terms of milk production and consumption? Well, FAO has been a very active partner in promoting dairy development mm -hmm. since 1970s. Currently, we have programs going in Thailand, Myanmar, uh, Bangladesh. Mm -hmm. uh, FAO has also worked with national and international partners to develop a regional dairy strategy, mm -hmm. which informs the governments mm -hmm. as to how, do you how to develop the dairy sector while including smallholder producers. Mm -hmm. Uh, FAO has been promoting uh, World Milk Day on June 1 and World School Milk Day mm -hmm. on September 28 mm -hmm. and a number of countries in the region are celebrating that. Mm -hmm. uh, here in Thailand we are partnering with Thai government and uh, last year the Prime Minister of Thailand gave a special message on, right. on, on school. Mm -hmm. So basically we are working towards the goal of one Asian class of milk mm -hmm. for every Asian child and we would like to invite all donors and all partners to join us uh, in mm -hmm. this worthy goal. Thank you very much, Mr. Reno Dehuja, for sharing your insights on the current situation FAO is facing in the Asia-Pacific region. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.